Surgery came up as an option. It was mentioned to me by Dr. Apcon probably when she was about a year and a half. She had had phenol and Botox injections. I started doing some research and sounded like a good idea, so we kind of went from there. I told her I'd like to find out more about it and the whole process and see if it was something I was willing to do. So the evaluation process is comprehensive, and what I mean by that, it involves a number of different physicians. So I'm involved, or one of my colleagues is involved on the rehab medicine side. Dr. Browd from neurosurgery is involved. So it's a fairly extensive evaluation with physical therapy, occupational therapy, physiatry, physicians. Then they come to me and I also kind of weigh in on the decision for surgery. For this part of the evaluation, we start thinking about what functional activities you want to see changed. We already made one idea, the ambulating or walking right. um, with the walker. So we can say walking maybe faster, maybe walking more efficiently or... Probably efficiently. What's in other areas, like her dressing or undressing she herself? She doesn't do any of it. Uh -huh. so, so that would be nice too. Yes. Because she's so tight. Mm -hmm. Another one would be sitting up. All the time, she doesn't show oh, yet. Okay, Lazy. she leans over yep. to the left. Okay, improve posture. That's a good one. The group of kids primarily that we recommend a dorsal rhizotomy for are a group of kids who are walking either on their own or with a walker. They're traditionally children who primarily have tone related to cerebral palsy, primarily in their legs. And what we're really looking for is a child who is easily engaged, so is able to uh, participate in the evaluation and is able to follow instructions. Now, if I hold your hands, you're going to stand up. Excellent. She has quite the personality. She is very outgoing. She's very, she's also very stubborn at the same time and very determined. That's one of the things that helps her get along right now is her personality. She wants to run, she wants to play soccer, she you know, wants to do all that stuff. So her determination to do that does help a lot. We're looking at the child's underlying strength because a dorsal rhizotomy, when we take away a child's muscle tone, sometimes it actually leads to some weakness. And sometimes that's hard for us to identify up front. And so we want to make sure as we're making the recommendation for rhizotomy, it's a child who has some underlying good strength. There you go. Let's see how far you can reach up. Nice. Our therapists are gifted at figuring that out. So they ask a child to do all sorts of different activities, uh, walking-wise, maybe jumping, getting up off the ground, and they're really able to assess um, how strong they are nice and all that tone. Both those feet pop up. Our initial appointment was where they gave us all the information, and they did a very good job of that. By the time we got done at that appointment, I knew exactly what they were going to do. And then we'll have them come into town with the idea that we want to make absolutely sure, but we're going to set up before they arrive the opportunity to be evaluated, have an operative date set up in a slot in rehab. They show up and then know that they're going to be here for a finite period of, of time and everything's just lined up. She's going to do so well because she really participates with um, play yeah. <laughs> and is really agreeable. Jump here and pop it.